unbelievably fresh. Look at how beautiful that is. So I'm thinking, it's such a beautiful morning out here. I want to take advantage of being at this wonderful fishing lodge. This trout is amazing, and I have so much to work with. My first course, I think I'll do a smoked trout. Kind of a, a, a classic preparation. Nothing too fancy, but these guys are so small. I think I can cure them in time, smoke them, and they'll be just perfect for a starter course. Lemon and fish are friends. Even when smoking fish, lemon adds a lovely nuance to the overall flavor profile. Just to help the salt and the sugar melt. Now this goes into the fridge for a few hours. That's perfect. Little trout friends. All right, now time for this. Nice batch of alder. There we go. Time to smoke this trout. Time to check on the trout. I think these guys are done. A nice little shine to the outside. I know for the amount of time that I've had them on the smoke that the flavor penetration will be just about right. I've got an idea for the sword fern to actually use it to flavor a dumpling. Just a couple of eggs. Now, time for some flour. Okay, now the fun part. Just a gentle and soft knead. Nothing too aggressive. I want these dumplings to be tender. I'm starting with the sauce right now, which is a, a beer blanc, a classic wine sauce. I've got butter in my pan, I have shallots in my pan, and I'm sauteing them just enough that they're soft, but no caramelization. And now it's time to put in white wine. Crank up the heat, and let that reduce. The trout stock that I made earlier, is going to go in now that I've reduced the wine by about half its original volume. The wine should refresh move again. Right now I'm just cutting down the sword fern. This is the component that I'm using to garnish them. So I'll saute the dumplings and all confetti and coat them in this wonderful sword fern. So I've got everything hot, ready to go. The last thing is for me to cook this fish. Skin side down, always away from you, so the oil doesn't splash up and burn you. to be perfect. Oh, yeah. It's not a bad kitchen. I can't believe the opportunity I have. This, perhaps, is the most incredible kitchen scenario I've ever had. I have an idea with the spruce tips and the needles 
to kind of make a green sauce, something that will really taste good on the steak. All right, just to smash these up a little bit, I want to release all of the essential oils that are in the needle. <laughs> okay, next up, some oil. Not too much, this is still about showcasing the ingredients. And now I just have to let that sit in the sun and give it some time for those flavors to develop. So I'm planning a cold cabbage salad, capitalizing on the Sitka needle water and a little bit of the syrup. I think what I'm gonna do is make a salad dressing for my cooked coleslaw, where the foundation starts with a little bit of this water. So this dressing is made of nothing but spruce essence and flavor. See how that's working flavor-wise. OK, that's in the wheelhouse. Yeah, that's such a pleasant surprise. There's one more thing that I'd like to make, a seasoning salt to use when I cook the steak out of the Sitka needles and the tips. I'm cutting these up as fine as possible. Now a little bit of salt. There we go, steak seasoning. That's a beautiful fire. Ah, uh, that's the sound. I know that wok is hot. Ah, uh, just a nice hint of caramelization. Some browning on that cabbage is going to add a bit of a nutty flavor. This beautiful needle water that last made might impart some flavor into the cabbage. Best part of the day. Come on up. Time to rub the steaks with the beautiful Sitka salt. It's beautiful. One neat trick with a wok is to use it to cover your meat when it's cooking over a grill, especially in a campfire situation like this. Two things happen. Number one, it's capturing all the smoke. Number two, it's helping warm up the steak. So you've got that heat coming in from underneath, but the top is warming up at the same time. So when I flip it, it's going to help me cook it faster and get that proper doneness. Oh, yeah, look at that. Not often the wild harvest ingredients are suited for dessert. I think this is one of those exceptions where it is. I'm really looking forward to using these needles to make a custard. It will be one layer of needle flavor, and it's a base where I can use Les's syrup with those beautiful spruce tips and that wonderful flavor to kind of float on top, and that will be the start of the dessert. There we go. I'm chopping it down because the small pieces actually release more flavor. I'm making a syrup to flavor my custard, but it's not gonna have the same flavor profile as the one that Les made. Uh, this one is made from 
the needles, and from the branch. Much different flavor. Yeah, that should do it. It's coming along nicely. What the heck? I'm gonna add some bigger pieces, because I can. Now some heavy cream. Back on the heat. Not too hot, nice gentle. I'm cooking this over low. Now, what I'm about to do is essential when it comes to making a custard. It's a step called tempering your eggs. So what you need to do is ladle in a little splash of the hot cream. Stir that up. What it does is it makes sure that the eggs are a closer temperature to your hot liquid. So when you add the eggs to the liquid, they don't cook and scramble. Now that I've tempered my eggs, I'm going to stir them back in to the cream. And that's essentially all it is to making the custard. All right, now one very important detail when cooking custard is to cook them in a water bath. Time to get them in the oven. The custard looks perfect. However, I know it's sweet because I tried the mixture before baking it. And I want a little bit of cream, just some plain whipped cream to offset that. And I've got exactly what I'm looking for.